young girl sang, bless the Lord, bless the Lord, bless his holy name. So, uh, thankful for that. Hello, Brother Kevin. How are you this morning? Bless you. Let's see you. I try to get around and shake hands with people before I, uh, before service is started, but this morning, uh, I had to go up to the uh, video room to get some things straightened out with Brother David, so uh, I had to get up there a little bit early, so some of you didn't get to see, so praise the Lord this morning. Uh, before we meet next Sunday, there'll be a new president. And the way that it looks this morning look like that many things could happen but this next week. You've got so many factions that are against him becoming a president. And then you've got factions on the other side that are going to make sure that he is. So I believe that we are getting very close to George Washington vision. That's right. Amen. The way that things are looking this morning, and uh, I'm not trying to put fear in people's hearts, but be very careful where you are this week and where that you are in crowds because it could be very dangerous before the week is over. I mean, tensions are that high. You've got Democrats and Republicans, but you've, you've got a split this morning that it goes beyond Democrats and Republicans. And it's very, very dangerous of what some are planning. And I don't want to be in the midst of anything of that nature, anything, so thank you, brother. So as for myself, I want to stay out of stay out of the big crowds and especially at night time, malls and things of that nature. But let that be that this morning. We have a subject this morning to deal with and we have uh, board meeting, got a meal out here to, after service is over this morning, and I won't, uh, I'll, I'll say this at this time instead of waiting until later, I want uh, board members and all to be back in here by one o'clock. So uh, we'll do our best to get through with this this morning in time to, but not cutting short. Because I don't aim to do that. I, this, last week, uh, turned on, turned on television on a, certain religious station and Jonathan Kahn was going to be on. And he's on all five days, half hour program. And they more or less give it to him. The whole program. Without a bunch of interruptions. And I liked what, I, what he had to say. We, no doubt this morning, are looking at part of the, anyway, part of those two prophets, maybe both of them. But we realize that what part they'll take because one of them is going to be a Levite because Moses was. And the other one is going to be an Old Testament type prophet which will be Elijah. 
because you see the same things working in the 11th chapter of the book of Revelation as they begin to prophesy turning water to wine which happened in Moses' ministry and calling fire down out of heaven which was Elijah's ministry. And it's going to be they, they have a testimony but most of it is prophecy of what they are because they are two prophets. And today I I believe that they are on the scene, they're well, and they're being acquainted more or less with the conditions of the world without really maybe even realizing the call that is upon their lives. I doubt that they really know that. But they will know it when the time comes because the temple is to be built. I don't want to crowd things in to mess up the picture. The temple will be built and there will be a, a war between Russia and, or not a war but an invasion of Russia and of the Middle Eastern uh, Arab countries or Islamic countries, let me put it that way. They won't really be Arab because Arabs are going to be defeated in a war that will happen between Israel and, and that type of people. We see the way things are going in Israel this morning. I just don't know how much longer this is going to go on with the way that things are being pushed on them. And just any little spark over there, they talk like that. They got different neighbors that are friendly with them, like Jordan. But just any little thing that happens there, they're going to jump to the other side. Because Israel will inherit part of the, part of the country of Jordan, if not all of Jordan, plus upper parts even beyond that. I know that they got the line marked along the Jordan River. That's where Israel go, but Israel went farther than the Jordan River. Because if you see where David went, and whenever Brother Jackson talked about that, in the rule of David and Solomon, they went much beyond the Jordan River. And as Brother Jackson preached showdown at sundown many years ago, he uh, was talking about the invasion coming from Basra, which would be Iraqi area there. So we, we believe that we're in that time. We know it's going to happen. But we... Uh, the Bible says when Jesus comes back, you'll not know the day nor the hour, but it said be ready. But that don't mean that he's not coming in a certain season that you will know. Because I believe we'll know the season. We just won't know the day or, not, or the hour. And whenever that time gets ready, uh, whenever it's, Nearing that time, we're going to know that we're in that time. In that time frame, because it's not, not going to just happen has, haphazardly. The coming of the Lord won't just happen haphazardly any day or any hour as they preach today, because God's got a set time. Just like He's got a set time for the Armageddon War. He said... In a day, in an hour, a month, and a year. So we know when uh, we know whenever the whenever Christ come, we know that in the beginning. We know whenever that he was to be crucified. We know when he was born. 
and we will know in the, in the shaded areas, let me put it that way, of time of when he's coming back. So, brother, sister, all I can say is let us get our lamps trimmed and burning. Because we do know that uh, everything, everything is planned out. The wedding, the wedding supper is planned out. And when the time for the wedding supper uh, come, that Jesus is talking about there in Matthew, uh, Matthew 25 there, then uh, we, we find out that, uh, as, or, uh, that he's talking about a certain, a certain time. He's talking about a, a time of when that whenever the bridegrooms come for the bride in the natural, then he is gone seven days. According to Jewish tradition. And that works exactly along with the scripture. The bride is gone seven years. They're about. And then she will come back. As... As no explanation can explain her splendor. Because she is coming back to rule and to reign with Christ. Whenever you see Jesus in Matthew or in, in Revelation chapter 1, you see splendor. You don't see... Uh, somebody being whipped and somebody being beat because you see majesty. That is, that is what it's going to be. It's going to be majesty. Amen. And I've put these scriptures on here that really don't have a whole lot to deal with uh, these last scriptures here. It don't have a whole lot to deal with what that I am... Uh, what I've been on, but this is something this morning that I felt led after that I saw Jonathan Kahn to deal with. I know that people not going like that, they don't like it because that I mentioned, but I don't care, I'm not preaching to you. Amen. I'm preaching to the bride. Amen. I'm, not, the I'm not preaching to yes. people that left her, and I'm not preaching right. to to people that are in disagreement with us. I'm preaching to bride people and I believe I believe that they agree they're in agreement across this world. Amen. And Norway and uh, wherever wherever they are. And we just thank the Lord for that this morning because we haven't tried to pull the wool over anyone's eye. All we have tried to do is, is preach truth. And I believe we have. Without just trying. I believe that we have preached truth and that we are preaching truth and, and it's going to have its results. Is a prophecy went this morning. We, we have a lot to look forward to. There's just a lot in there to look forward to. I noticed, and uh, I, I noticed in the tongues. It's kind of long, brother Charles' tongues wasn't real long that he spoke, but the prophecy was longer. Because why? Because it was going back to the to the original tongues, and a lot of the times it. Things were kind of repeated, and then whenever the prophecy come it, over and over and over, thus saith the Lord. Thus saith the Lord. So, uh, if it's if it's true of what we're hearing, they will resemble. There'll be a resemblance of what that was really spoken in an unknown tongue whenever it comes out to our hearing and understanding. That's right. So I thank the Lord for that this morning. I, I know that I, uh, while, while I was up here singing the last song, I went to Brother David and asked him to put a certain picture up there for me. I don't know if he's found it or not, but anyway, 
I kind of want to deal with that this morning as well as some other pictures that I had him to put up there, which will be with the scriptures that I have if he can find it, if he'd be able to find it. So I want to go this morning in the Word. Stuck. I want to go to Luke the second chapter. You know in the book of John John starts out in the beginning was the word. He don't deal with the birth of Christ. But he does deal with baptism as all the rest of them do. But Luke goes into particulars about it. Matthew talks about the birth of Christ, but he don't go into the particulars about it like Luke does. And Luke really goes into it in, in a way that it's kind of a long conversation. Because he deals with that, he deals with the birth of John, of Zacharias, of how that he was dumb for a certain length of time, which meant he couldn't speak. He could hear, but he couldn't speak. And things, were, things went on like that until, you know, that Gabriel come to marry. When Gabriel come to marry, to marry, then uh, he told her that she was going to have a child, and then we understand that this was a hard thing for Joseph, which she was espoused to be married to, for him to receive, but he wasn't going to put, away, put her away to wherever a thing would be, everybody would know about it. He was going to put her away privately, and which was... A manly thing that shows the nature of the man that was going to be the the stepdad. Let me put it that way. Going to be the stepdad. So, uh, thank you, brother David. He got what I wanted here. So, uh, I want to start here in the second chapter, and that will be. Uh, That'll be concerning concerning the manger, because I have something to say about that from what that I heard this week. Uh, here is is what you see if you go to uh, to Armageddon. Armageddon was a city of refuge. This was where Solomon protected the Israel or Jerusalem. From there, this is where he protected it because you can see for miles around because you've got a flat valley there and it's a, it's a hill-like condition and, and there's a manger up there just like this, which a manger was a feeding trough. So uh, I really enjoyed what, that I, what that I heard from that. And I want to put it into my message this morning to try to help us to understand why certain things were done in the way that they were. Brother David got that for me and he got this for me, which would have been, I know that they got all these Christmas scenes and some of them were just pure ornery this year that they put out. Well, they got their reward. They got somebody to agree with them because people will agree with you whatever you do. There are people that will agree with you if you're wrong. And they will agree and they won't change because they know they're wrong. But that's, that's them. Everybody has got their own idea about how things that should be without a revelation. 
A revelation settles things of how that they really are. And as I read this, uh, I, I want you to be able to understand what that I'm talking about. It said, And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. That, that is, he wasn't talking about the United States. He wasn't talking about South America, North America, Canada. He wasn't talking about that. He's talking about the He's talking about the known world at that time, which would have covered a lot of Africa. It would have covered uh, the Middle East, all the way into a, into Iran, then all the way into the uh, to the countries of Europe. So this is where that he ruled. So. The decree, decree went out to all them, which included Israel. Because Israel at this time was under Roman rule. So that's why Caesar uh, here put out that decree because he was... Uh, well, maybe I better not say that. Because he, he loved taxes. I'll put it that way. He loved to tax the people. So, and this taxation, taxing, was first made when Cyrus was governor of Syria. So, this was when Cyrus was the governor of Syria. And all went, went to be taxed every man into his own city. Everybody, that would have included Europe, everybody else. They had a certain city that they had to go to. That's where they were born. Which was really a census too. Because each head of each family had to go and be taxed. And all the family was, was known by the head of the house at that time. And Joseph also went up from... Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David. That's the reason he is in Bethlehem. To be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. I remember Brother Jackson going over that, and he said that Mary didn't know exactly when this took place. So he was there at a time that he wasn't for sure just what day or, or anything, but they, she was great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she, she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling, swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. There's a reason for that. That's the reason I've got this. Now I want to go to, I'll, I'll come back to this, but I want to go to John. The sixth chapter. Starting in the 48th verse. I, I am that bread of life. This is the chapter that he begins to deal with his with his self, the bread of life of which he's speaking of is his body. Because he explains that as you go on down. 
Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. Other words, they eat manna in the wilderness and they're dead because they didn't partake of that bread. Because they had, they were always looking at the opposite. This, this come by faith. If God hadn't called Moses, they never went out of that land. Because he had an appointed prophet. But in the mind of God, when he told Abraham that he would be, that his seed would be uh, missing from the, from the promised land for 400 some years, then... Uh, this God had Moses in mind. That that should plant something in your heart. God, whenever He fixed this thing out, if you look at it right, He had you in mind. Amen. We're a privileged people. Yes. Amen. Not because that we are something in ourselves. Whenever we think that, then we become nothing. Because Jesus said, when you have done all, then, then claim to do nothing, then put yourself down on the bottom. Because He didn't want any up the up the up people in His bride. The, the, these preachers, you see them on television. They have thousands of people in their congregation and, and really they're not teaching them anything because they're just religious people. Just serpent seed. That's all that you can make out of it. But he said, I am... The bread of life, your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness on our dead. How does this connect with this? We'll see. This is the bread which came, came down from heaven that a man may eat thereof and not die. Now he's getting into it. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. Hold that in your memory. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. He's talking about his body that he will give. For the life of the world, there, there are a whole lot in that. The Jews therefore strove among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? They didn't get it. Because it hadn't yet accomplished. It don't, it don't, it's not accomplished till the cross. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink His blood, ye have no life in you. Whosoever eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood, hath eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drank indeed. That's why you take communion. Because the communion is, the communion is, is what it says 
It's partaking of Him. You're communing. You're communing His life into your life. As the living Father has sent me, and I live by the Father, so he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. This is the bread which came down from heaven, not as your fathers did eat manna, and are dead. He that eateth of this bread shall live forever. Let's go back up to that 51st verse. He repeats this three times. The last verse that I read. And this verse that I read. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh which I will give for the life of the world. All right. This is the bread which came down from heaven. Amen. Where did Jesus come to to be born? His life is from above. Where was he born? And Luke has said he was born in Bethlehem. What does the word Bethlehem mean? The house of bread. So where did he come to? A manger. He came down from heaven right here is a representative. He had to be born in a manger for this to be fulfilled because what is he? He's the bread of life yes. and this is a feeding trough. Yes. Amen. Praise the Lord. Do you get it? Yes. Amen. His life came down from heaven. I, I, I didn't understand this years ago. I asked Brother Jackson about it one time. Because then, then it looks like that, that he lived beforehand. But that's not true. His life was from the Father right. which came down from heaven yes. and angels spoke it and the Holy Ghost which is from heaven overshadowed Amen. Mary. Amen. And she had a child that came down from heaven in a manger there that we might eat. Yes, amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We go back to Micah. I didn't want to put all these scriptures down. Micah chapter 5. Verse 1 and 2. Now gather thyself in troops, O daughter of troops. He hath laid siege against us. They shall smite the judge of Israel with a rod upon the cheek. But thou Bethlehem, 
Ephrata, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall he come forth unto thee, unto me, that is to, to rule, uh, rule, to be ruler in Israel, who's going forth, have been from all, from everlasting. Who's going forth. That is the life of God, which is a life that sprang forth from eternity. You have eternal life because you accepted the shed blood of Jesus Christ for your sins. Therefore, you are eternal. You come from eternity. Before eternity ever was, you was in God's being. That's the reason why that you've accepted Him today and because of, right. of His eternal purpose before the world began, right. you were in His thoughts. Amen. That's why you'll go right into the, into the millennium as sons and daughters of God to rule and to reign. And then after that, you into eternal eternity because you're eternal beings. See what we were doing, we were muddling around, that's an old word, muddling around in the world, acting like the world, but there was a seed in us. Right. Right. Amen. There was already an eternal seed in us that had to be accepted. So what it is? What it is? What it started this morning in the in the service? From the very beginning, the songs begin to build, begin to build, until it got to where that it was more than just a song service. It was an expression. Yes. We are an expression of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. We're, we are an expression of His life. Right. Well, that's why the Bible said, Paul said, we are not our own. Matthew 26. Sixty-seven. <coughs> then did they spit in his face. And buffeted him, and others smote him with the palms of their hands. I wonder how come? I said with the palms of their hands. Isn't that of what did I saw Jonathan Kahn?
He said, which we'll, we'll go from this to our next pictures. Whenever Jesus was crucified, he's the type of a lamb. The high priest or the priest, whenever a lamb is killed, they had to place their hands on its head. What is that all about? They had to place their hands on his head. Because that they are placing their sins. And a high priest once a year, he's placing the sins of all Israel on that lamb's head before it's slain. So why... Is it they, they smote him with the palms of their hands instead of their fist? They're placing their hands, their sins, they're placing on his head. And whenever Jesus was crucified, We'll look, at, we'll look at that a little farther. Whenever Jesus was crucified, they placed their hands, they smote him with a reed. It's a Bible, it's all fulfilling of the scripture. They smote him, as I read a while ago, they smote him with a reed. They placed their hands on his head. So, what, did, what happened? Cursed is everyone that hangs from a tree. Let's go to 1 Corinthians or 2 Corinthians chapter 5. For he hath made him to be sin for us. By them, what are they doing? They're placing hands. They put a crown on his head. They're placing their hands on his head. That is, we're, place, we're placing our sins on him. Yes. We had no alternative except in what the preacher says, except in coming up and shaking hands with the preacher won't do it. We've got to accept what he said and what he done because his sins were our sins were placed upon his head because he knew no sin. They had to take a lamb without blemish and they had to place their, their hands upon that lamb and they had before that they killed it. That is placing the sins of the nation of Israel upon a lamb. God accepted it. Because it was representing what would come. So mine and your sins was placed on his head. Whenever he gave up the ghost, whenever he died, 
then he takes our sins. Amen. Let me go to the next picture. I'll come back to this. See what the Jews do. They place the blood upon the doorpost. They go here, here, and here. It means that the sacrifice has not yet come down. This is an animal sacrifice. It's not a human sacrifice, but it is a representation that he hadn't come yet because they're looking up. Let me read this again. For he hath made him to be sin, to take our sins upon himself. That is why that we should be more reverent yes. unto the obedience of Christ because he took our guilt on himself. When we're baptized in His name, we become dead. We're dead to sin. Therefore, sin shall not rule over you. Right. Amen. Praise the Lord. He became sin for us who knew no sin. Right. Amen. That we might be made the righteousness of God the Amen. Father yes. by Him. Moses. God spoke to Moses. He was the first to tell him to do this. This became law. It was not law before that. Abraham sacrificed, but he didn't know this part. Right. Let's go back to let's go back to the cross. Praise the Lord. Matthew twenty two verse thirty. I should have 27. Didn't make my number plain enough. 27 verse 30. And they spit upon him and took the reed and smote him on the head. It is all adding up for Scripture. Jesus took a beating. What time was he crucified? The third hour of the day. What time did he die? The ninth hour. That was the time 
of the morning sacrifice and the evening sacrifice. Here they're fully filling the Bible without knowing it because what are they doing in the temple? They're offering the morning sacrifice whenever he is to be offered up. On what day? What day? The same day, Passover. It had to be on Passover. Passover Friday. In the ninth hour, here they are, standing watching him die. At the time of the evening sacrifice, here they are offering up a sacrifice of the evening whenever their lamb is on the cross. And they're still taking a lamb and, and, and killing that little lamb because they can't recognize this lamb. Let us go to Galatians chapter 3, which he even makes it a little plainer here. Thirteen and fourteen. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is every one that hangeth on a tree. that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. I said a while ago, taking that offering that was made to put upon the doorpost, what are they doing? They're taking this, and this, and putting it here. But here, he is here, here, and down here. His feet. It just, it just stops it. Why is it? What's the difference? Because God is coming down to man. Amen. Instead of, instead of us going up in the way that we were to put blood on something, then we come down to hear which was His feet that caused the Spirit of God came down through Him to us. He hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. What all it is, it's types of the Old Testament, which the Jews, the Jews were God's wife. They were. You read that in the book of Hosea. What is Hosea saying? Hosea is, I know they made songs out of this and all, but that, that's not the picture. They don't, even, they don't even get the picture. Because Hosea, as you look at him, what is he doing? 
He's marrying a prostitute. A prophet. God tells him to marry a prostitute. And he has a son by him. He has a, or, or by her, and he has a daughter by her, but he names what is going on in Israel. Showing how Israel has strayed away from God and have come, become prostitutes unto the living God which was his life, which was his wife. Now then, we are the bride of Christ. And because the life came down from above, the life came down from above to a manger. I, I, at one time I didn't understand that. Because I, I, it looked like Jesus come from up here someplace. But He didn't. But the life that was placed in Mary was from above. Amen. And because it was from above, then He gave His life by them placing their hands upon His head they were placing our sins on Him and He became sin for us. Is this a little hard to understand? Other words, He took our sins upon Himself. He became guilty that we might be made free. You didn't just rejoice this morning because that you come to church saying, I'm going to go rejoice. You didn't know it. But you come full of the Spirit. Amen. And when that song began to be sang yes. by our brothers and sisters, from Norway and Niffy. <laughs> talking about the waters. Jesus said, I am the water yes. of life. The rain comes down from above. Yes. Amen. You don't plan these things. You can't plan them. It won't work out. I remember as Brother Kevin was talking the other night, I remember how that some said they didn't have a service unless they could jump. Now then, where are they? Wearing their little skinny britches. I don't know what they are, the man or the woman anymore. I don't know which one they've accepted. A bunch of feminine men or masculine women is a disgrace. It's a disgrace to this nation. Now then, I hear that they're going to make trouble for the governor of Kentucky. Because he's not going to accept. Women or men that don't know who they are to go to the opposite bathroom. God's got to clean this nation. He's got to do something here. If this is a nation that the Jews are going to come to, they're not going to come to a reprobate nation. We could be on the verge of a war in this nation in the next few weeks or months. Because God's tired of it. 
He's tired of a government that is pushing these things. They don't care. Because there ain't, no, ain't no morals in them. The morals are gone. Amen. Something I heard Friday. Maybe it's yesterday morning. The end of 2015... There was a hundred bikers that got together to stand with Trump. They was talking to this, this one biker yesterday, the head over the thing, and he said, now we're 200,000 and we're going to Washington to make sure that he becomes president without trouble. And you've got another side there that is... I'm not saying they're right. But I'm saying that we could be looking at something right. within the next five days that we haven't seen. That's why I say, be careful. Be careful where you're at. It don't have to happen, but I, I couldn't, but it could. The Bible says, be wise as serpents. 